Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial, we are going to be working on a dish towel and wash rag set. I think this pattern is so pretty. I'm gonna fold this dish towel for you. Um, while I'm actually I'm doing that, I want to tell you guys real quick, I wanna apologize for the air conditioner running in the background. It is way too hot to uh, shut that off to film today, so I'm just gonna let it run. Um, I don't think it's that loud, but if it does bother you, I apologize. I shouldn't need it much longer, but who knows. Anyway, so here we have the dish towel. Isn't that st stitch definition so pretty? I'm gonna let it sit there for a minute. <laughs> I just think that is so pretty. I love it. And here we have the little wash rag. All right, super easy pattern, nothing too complicated. It's, it is a three, nope, I'm sorry, four row repeat. We work the two rows of puff stitches, two rows of double. Puff, two row puff, two double. And that's it, that's what we just repeat, repeat for the length you want. All right, so talk about that, the length. This wash rag measures 10 and 3 quarter inches wide and 10 and a half inches long, All right? I wrote it down. <clears throat> yeah, 10 and a half wide and 10 and a quarter long. And you guys can make these however however big you want. Use a stitch pattern for whatever you want. All right, this dish towel, I love a huge dish, dish towel because I like to be able to lay it out and then put my dishes on it after I wash them. Or... All right, so this should be 16 inches and a quarter, 16 and a quarter inches. So I'm coming up 16 inches right there. I must have measured it at a wide spot or something when I wrote, yeah, right there, it's almost a quarter. And then, 25 and a quarter long. So it's a decent size. But man, and it is heavy, it's a sturdy towel. I mean, you can kinda hear how heavy it is. All right, let's talk about what you're gonna need. I used, this is my second cone. I just used a little bit out of the second, but you, you're not gonna need two cones. You're just gonna need one full cone of cotton yarn. Now I used Village Yarn Craft Cotton. I used the color Marine. It is a four weight, 100% cotton, four ply, and it does have 743 yards. Now I didn't use, well, if you buy a new cone, you will not use that full cone. Um, you will use a lot of it, but not all of it. Put that back inside there. I do recommend that you do use a cone. Don't buy the little, the little skeins or cakes of cotton, only because this stitch pattern uses a lot of yarn and you will use a lot. You'll probably end up spending way more, um, way more money buying the little cakes or the skeins of cotton yarn rather than spending the money on a cone. So I would definitely suggest that. Um, however, if you're just gonna make the wash rag, yeah, you don't know if, you definitely don't need a whole cone. You could use, you could probably get, I would say get, two, um, let me, I'm trying to think. I would say get at least to make just the wash rag to be on the safe side, I would get at least 400 yards. Well, maybe not even that much. 300, 200 to 300 yards for one wash rag. And I'm giving you a lot of extra just in case. I live by my little mantra, I'd rather have too much than not enough. <laughs> So um, I would definitely go by that, um, but yeah, if you're going to make the dish towel, get a cone. All right, so I used 
stitch markers. Well, sticks, <laughs> stitch markers are optional. Um, I'll show you why in a little bit. You're going to need a yarn needle to weave in your ends. Now, I did use a four and a half millimeter hook. Um, you don't have to use a four millimeter, four and a half. I mean, you can go up to a five. It shouldn't be that big of a difference from mine, depending on your tension, obviously. I mean, if you're looser than I am, it's, it's going to be bigger than mine, even with a four and a half millimeter. But if you go up to a five and your tension's bigger, it's going to be bigger than that. But, um, because I know some people kind of like don't like the idea of the four and a half or a four. So I'm going to say you can use a five and it should be okay. Just, it may be a tad bit bigger, but I did use the four and a half. Um, so the stitch markers, like I said earlier, they're not necessary. I just, I'm putting them in here because I can definitely see, you know, when, when I show you guys this pattern, the in stitches are first and our last stitch are turned significantly and I can really see how some people might get a little um, lost in that so I would definitely suggest you know it ain't gonna hurt nothing to use some stitch markers okay so that is it for your supplies now let's talk about the actual pattern so I since I have my pieces made I am gonna work mine on a smaller scale so right now I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna chain for the wash rag and the dish towel because I'm not going to make a whole nother wash rag, right? I'm just going to do a small scale and show you guys the pattern and then show you the border and you guys can go from there. So on your wash rag, I chained 42 to start this pattern, 42 for your wash rag. Okay. And then I worked it until I had one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, six sets of the puff stitch rows finished it with the two double crochet rows okay so that's your wash rag now my dish towel unfold this my dish towel I chained 64 okay and I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen row sixteen sets of my puff stitch rows and then work the two double crochet rows, okay? This, it'll make sense in just a second. Um, the reason I do my dish towel and wash rag sets, to, the dish towel and wash rag tutorial sets like this is because um, it's so much easier and saves time on my tutorials and all this filming. All right, so chain 42 for the wash rag, chain 64 for the dish towel, all right? And the stitch pattern is consists of any, or um, consists of chaining any even number. So if you wanna use this stitch pattern for something else, chain, chain any number, okay? All right, so I am going to get me a little swatch right here so I can show you guys the pattern and then you guys can go crazy with your wash rag and dish towel. So I'm going to get a little chain done and I'm going to adjust my camera and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I've got a little swatch here, a little chain swatch here. All right, to start our pattern, so like I'll say it again, chain 42 for your wash rag, chain 64 for the dish towel, okay? And now we'll, to start the pattern, we're going to double crochet in the third chain from our hook. So you can see right there is one, there's two, and there's three. So I'm going to double crochet right into that third chain. And now we're just going to double crochet into each chain, each of the remaining chains, I should say. Okay, so go ahead and work row one, double crochet all the way down your chain and come back and I will meet you when I work into that last chain, okay? Be right back. Okay, so I've got one more chain to work into right here. All right, so I have 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12 double crochet, and then that chain that we skipped at the beginning. Okay? And I started, so I have 13 double crochets. I have 12 double and then that chain. And I started with a chain of 14. So you're going to have one less than, you, uh, than your beginning chain. Okay? All right. So that was row one. We're going to work row two. chain one and turn and we're going to double crochet right back into that very first double crochet so if when you you know give it a, pull it out a little bit you can see right there that's the top of our first double so we're going to yarn over go right in there double into that very first one and then double into each double all the way across so super easy row again and slack. Okay, so go ahead and just double crochet across your row and I will meet you when I get to the end of this row two, okay? All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of row two. I have one more double crochet to work into right there. You can see the top of it right there. One more. And then I have the chain two that we skipped at the beginning. And you can see this. <clears throat> Get my needle straight. There we go. Right there is the chain I want to work into. So I'm going to insert my hook right through there okay so I'm gonna yarn over and go right in there and it may be a little tight or you may split it like I just did there and then work that last double and now we don't have to worry about working into any chains okay so there is your row two all right so now we are going to move on to row three and row three is the first row of our four row pattern repeat, okay? So we chain one and we are gonna turn. And we are going to single crochet into that first double right there. So we're gonna single into there. Now this is where you may want, if you choose to use your stitch markers, you may wanna mark your first and last stitches starting on these rows. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put one in there. All right, now right back into that double crochet, we're gonna work a puff stitch, a three double crochet puff stitch, okay? So we yarn over, go right back into there, pull up a loop, and pull it up to the height of a double, okay? Now we're gonna yarn over again, go right back in there, pull up a loop, pull it up again. And one more time, go in, pull up a loop, Pull it up. Now you should have seven loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna yarn over and only pull through six. Get me some more slack. We're gonna only pull through six. So that last loop on our hook, we're not gonna go through that one. We're just gonna yarn over and go through six. Now we have two uh, loops left on our hook and we're going to yarn over and pull through two and there's our puff stitch Okay, now we're going to skip that next double and single crochet and puff into the next Our single and now we work our puff again And that is what we're going to repeat for row three single puff we already worked our single. I can't hold my tension on my fingers for some reason. All right, so we already worked our single, so now we're gonna puff. So we yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. Now pull it up a little bit. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. Do that three times. We should have seven loops. 
we are only going to pull through, yarn over and pull through six, leaving that last loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Skip the next double, single crochet and puff into the next one. Single, and then our puff. I'm gonna show you guys one more time, slow motion. We're gonna yarn over, go right back into that double, pull up a loop. Make sure you pull it up a little bit. Yarn over, go back in, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go back in, pull up a loop. Should have seven. We are going to yarn over and pull through six only, leaving two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Skip that next double, single and puff into the next. Single. Now if we stop and look, this is what creates the first puff row, so row three. So this is always going to be the front of your work. Um, when you work row three and your puff stitches lay down like that, the so like looking at the wash rag, make sure I got this set right. Your first row of puff stitches, your third, your row three repeat is always going to be the front of your work. And that's going to come in uh, come into play in just a minute, okay? All right, so you guys repeat that all the way across your row, okay? Single, puff, one, two, three, yarn over, pull through six, yarn over, pull through two, skip your next. Single, puff into the next, skip the next single and puff into the third from your last, okay? So you're gonna have your third to last will have the single and your puff and then stop there, okay? So I'm gonna work my last few and then I will meet you when I get to that third one, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, so I have worked into my third to last double, I worked my single and my puff, and now what we do is skip the second to last double and into that last double, turn it just a tad bit so you can see that top, we're going to work one single and that's it. Just that single crochet. Make sure you get both of your loops. Alright, just that single. And that's the end of row three, okay? So this is what it should look like facing you. So now we're going to work row four the second row of the four row repeat. So we chain one and turn. And now what we're gonna do is right back into that single crochet, we're gonna work a single. And if you want to mark, well, where'd my stitch marker go? Uh, must have dropped it, I don't, oh, there it is. Okay, go ahead and mark that single crochet. But like I said, you don't have to do this. I just, it's easier. Anything to make, you know, your work a little easier. Okay, sorry I was getting some slack. All right, so we singled into that first single, and now we are going to puff right into there. One, two, Three, yarn over, pull through six, two loops left, yarn over, pull through two. And now, if you look at your work, what you're looking at, you get this to lay right, what you're looking at, oh dang it, I dropped my needle. Okay, just use my scissors. What you're looking at is the top of the puffs and then the singles. Top of the puff, single. What we're doing for row four is only working into the single. So you're going to skip the top of that puff and go into your single. Okay? So we just worked the f into that first single with a single and a puff. Now we skip that puff, which is the, you know, I mean, you can see the difference. The longer one, short one. Longer one, short one. We're going to go into the short one, which is the single crochet. And we're going to go right in there with a single and a puff. So we single, 
and then go right in there with your puff. One, two, three. Yarn over, pull through six, two loops left, yarn over, pull through both. Skip your long, go into your short with a single and a puff. Ah. One, two, three. Yarn over, pull through six, two left, yarn over, pull through two. Skip the long, single into the short. All right, so I am gonna pause right here and I wanna show you guys something. So if you hold your work, you notice how your row three puffs are facing you. Like I said earlier, that's the front of your work. But you notice how row four, the puffs are facing the other way. What we're gonna do is I suggest like the end of a pin. Well, the end of your crochet hook might work. I think mine having this rubber piece, uh, it may work. I don't. I used a pin when I did this, but just take that and you're gonna pop it right through. Take the end and pop it right through. Take your, I'm gonna use my pin and pop it right through. And what that does is sets those puffs from row four to the front. Now you don't have to do this, um, you know, as you're working, you could finish your dish towel or wash rag and then just go through and pop all those through. Um, I honestly, to be 100% honest with you, I didn't even do it on my dish towel and can, you can't tell the difference, can you? They eventually just kind of work their way to the front. I mean, if I, I'm sure if I went through here and just pushed all these forward, it'd be more defined. I mean, do you see the difference? <laughs> I did them here and not there. So, I mean, it's up to you. It, I mean, it is, I kind of, now that I did it, I can see the difference and it does look a little more defined, but that's all right. I'm not too concerned. So, I mean, if you want to do it, um, I would definitely suggest just wait until you're done because by the time you're done flipping your work, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, I'm sure they're just going to pop right back on the other side. But, okay, so that is what you repeat for row four. So, work your single puff into your single crochet skip that long stitch which is the top of your puff and into the next single crochet single and puff one two three yarn over pull through six two left two loops left on your hook yarn over pull through two skip the next stitch which is the long which is the top of your puff and single crochet and puff into the next stitch Okay, so I want you guys to repeat that across, and I, well, I'll just go ahead and finish row four because I'm right there. So if I, if you look, I have my last single right there, it's my last single, there's the puff and there's the single. So I'm going to work the single and puff across my row. One two, three, ah, not four, what am I doing? Three, yarn over, pull through six, two loops left on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so I'm gonna skip the next stitch, which is my th that long one, which is my puff, and then into the second to last single, right there's the second to last, right here's my last, I'm gonna work my single and my puff, one, two, three, yarn over, pull through six, two loops left, yarn over, pull through two, and into that very last single crochet, I'm gonna give this little tug so it sticks out. We're just gonna work one single crochet. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my stitch marker back in there. Well, actually, no, I'm not, because I'm getting ready to work right back into it. All right, so that's the end of row four. So I'm gonna chain one and turn. And for row five, which is the third row of the four row repeat, we are just gonna work one double crochet into the top of each single and each puff. So each short and each long, just one double crochet. So go right back into that very first single crochet. 
with a double and then double into each short and to each long. So you're just gonna double crochet right across here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause my video and get this done real quick. I think I might go top off my coffee too. So I will be right back. Okay, so I am back and I need to work one more double crochet into that last stitch. So I'm going to take that stitch marker out and double crochet into there. Alright, that is the end of row five and that is the third row of our repeat. And so to move on to row six, we're going to chain one and turn. In row six, we are just going to work a double into each double. So into that very first one. And now we just double crochet across. So that is the fourth row of our four row repeat. Okay? So you have two puff, uh, about such stitches, two puff rows two double crochet rows, two puff rows, two double crochet rows. So now you guys can kind of get an idea of why I said this this stitch pattern is a little bit of a yarn eater. <laughs> Those puff stitches use quite a bit. Almost to the end of row six, running out of yarn, so get myself a little bit of slack. All right, so I have one more double crochet to work into. So I'm going to turn my work a little bit to be able to see it. And there you go. So you can go through there and pop your row fours through if you want to. Alright, so now you just, to repeat three, four, five, six, chain one, turn, repeat row three, chain one turn, repeat row four, chain one turn, repeat row five, chain one turn, row six, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six. So you can just rewind the video and um, watch your rows again or, you know, write it down as you go. But that's it. That's how easy this little, pa this stitch pattern is. So once you get your wash rag and your dish towel done, I worked just a tiny little border. All I did is, where'd I put my wash rag? Oh, here it is. All I did was just work a row around of single crochet all the way around. Evenly space them out down your side. Three in each at the farthest corner of your work that you can get into. I have a hair. I worked three single, three across. So I'll show you real quick how I did that. So once you get your dish towel or your wash rag done, whichever, and you work that last double crochet, chain one, and then I'm going to rotate my work and I'm going to go right into the top of that last double crochet. I'm going to work one single. Now I know I said on the corners we're going to work three single crochet on each corner, but this last one I'm going to add the last two single once I've, I come back around to it, okay? So we have one there and now I'm just going to evenly space them out down these, um, down these rougher sides, okay? So how many you have is completely, you know, up to you and your attention. Just, you know, work, I'd say work a good 10 stitches, 10 double crochets, or I'm sorry, single crochets. Stop, you know, look at your work. Is it bunched up? You know, if it's bunched up, it, you know, you got way too many. If it's now bunched up, can you can either have way too many or not enough. So you may, you know, pull a couple out, add a few, take out a few, however many you need just to have a nice straight edge. And I do work around some of my double crochets, you know, this like I just did right there. Like right there is a double crochet. I don't, you know, go through it. I, I actually worked right around it. It's not gonna hurt anything. Just like that. So work your singles all the way down till you get to your corner. And this corner is my chain corner. So it's a little tougher to see, but right there, is a chain and that's where I'm gonna make my corner. So basically I'm just going into the farthest on the edge, you know, on that that 90 degree turn that I can get into. I'm just gonna go right in there and work three double. A single, dang it, why do I keep saying double? One, 
two, three. And now I'm gonna rotate my work and now I'm across the bottom. So now you can see the remaining chain loops from the beginning of our work. And I'm just gonna work right into there. So if you look, I'm gonna show you guys. I, sh I didn't pick up my needle, I should have. I don't see it. Um, get one of my spares here. All right, so if you look, right here is a double crochet, okay? And right here are the two legs of the double crochet that goes into that chain. So if you take your hook and you just push it through where your the two legs are at the bottom of the double, right there, that's the remaining, if I pull that up, that's the remaining loops of that beginning chain. You see it? So if I turn it over, there's your doubles. So here's your double. And there's the two legs of your double going into that chain. Okay? So I'm gonna turn that back around. And now you can see the two legs right there. So I'm just gonna take my hook, push it right on those two legs, and it goes through the remaining loops of that chain. And that's where we're gonna single crochet. Okay, so you can find your next two loops the two legs of your double, set it right where those two legs come together and push and it goes right through the remaining loops of that chain. All right, so that is all I'm gonna single crochet across the bottom. Do, 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 do single crochet across here. Now this corner is a little easier to see because it's your slip stitch from the beginning of your chain. So right into that slip stitch corner, three single. One, move that tail out of the way. Two, and three. Okay, so now I'm just gonna single crochet up this side. So I'm going to go right around that double and then just go where I can get my hook, make sure they're evenly spaced out and not too bunched up. So go all the way up this side and I'm just about, you can see that double crochet right there. I'm going to get one more in there and now I'm going to go right into the top of that double crochet and work my three single. One, two, and three. And now it's pretty easy to see where you need to go, right? Just across the top of those doubles. One, two, three, four, five. I guess it's not necessary to count. I just. <laughs> trying to keep there from being quiet space. All right, so single crochet. All right, now it looks a little odd right here. We don't, you know, it's a little hard to see what we got going on. But what we have is our second to last double. Now remember we worked around that double, the very last double right there, so it kind of looks a little weird. But right there is the top of that last double crochet. And there is our chain one and that first single that we worked. So I'm gonna single into my second to last double, into that last double right there. I'm gonna work my two single to finish off this corner. And I worked right around that chain one that I did at the beginning. And now I'm just gonna slip stitch to that first single, chain one, and fasten off. I'm not gonna cut mine because I'm just gonna put this little swatch back on my cone. But there you go. And that's how you work your, your your border for your wash rag and your dish towel set. Now, I, I did forget to say, um, make sure when you start your, your border, you're completely done with your pattern. So like I said earlier on my wash rag, I worked, turn it over. No, that was right. Right? Yeah. I worked my row one, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. 
three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six. Then start your border. So you work the whole four sets. So you're, you're making sure that row three is um, the front of your work. So you know if you work three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, row, and you stop your stop your project on row six, row three of each set of each. Uh, uh, Puff, I about said post, each puff set will be facing the front. So three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, and you should be good when you reach the desired length or height you want um, to start the border row, okay? And that's it, guys. That is the pattern. Just that easy. I'll pull you guys out a little bit. And I just, why will this not go right? I just think this stitch pattern is so pretty. The, the, the two puff stitches, I love how the two puff stitch rows, I love how row three, the puffs are facing this way. And then row four, they're going down. So you got up, down, up, down, up, down. Almost looks like a braid. And it's super bumpy. You can see, if I hold it up, how much the the puff rows stand up off of the wash rag. Okay guys, that's it. I hope, I hope, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. I hope everything comes out perfect. You guys have no issues. <laughs> All right, that is it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you haven't, because I have got all kinds of stuff coming out of my mind to go from my fingertips to my hook to in front of my camera, to YouTube, to you guys. <laughs> um, oh, also, check out that description box down there because I've got links to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. My email address is down there. i got all kinds of stuff down there for you guys to check out. Um, uh, I just had a thought. I forgot to tell you guys the yarn that I use is from Hirschner's. I don't know why I didn't say that at the beginning. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.